So in today's video, we're going to talk about exactly what is mathematical research, what do mathematicians actually do when they sit down to do research, how do mathematicians pick their problems, have all the problems been solved, what does a mathematician do on a day-to-day -day basis? The first question we'd like to look at is what is mathematical research? There are many problems which remain open in mathematics. Mathematicians have a lot more work to do. Not every equation has been solved. Not every structure that has some type of symmetry or some type of interesting phenomenon has been studied and fully understood yet. There are many things we don't understand. How do you find a problem to study? Do you typically do your research first as a master's or PhD student. That is under the supervision of an academic advisor. In my case, I'm currently doing my PhD. When you start your PhD, you pick your advisor. In my case, I study the area of complex differential geometry, which is higher dimensional complex variables and things to do with geometry of manifolds and curvature and things of that nature. My supervisors, Ben Andrews and Geng Tian, they are experts in these fields. We get a vague idea of the area that I seem to be interested in. We work through books so they suggest materials for example they would suggest certain textbooks the first year is typically spent on reading material getting your basic understanding up to a level where you can actually make contribution obviously there is so much mathematics you can't learn everything and the point is to learn just enough so you can start getting into the game and then you'll start refining your skills as the needs become more narrow let's be a little more precise here so you've done this reading now and you you understand basically what's going on in the field and the question is well how do you pick a problem how do you know what problem has not been solved in the field and might you might actually have a chance of solving that's the point of the academic advisor the PhD supervisor or master's supervisor has been in the field for 10 20 30 40 years even could be longer and they know which problems have been attempted which problems are completely solved and they will pick out a problem that they think that you could make some progress on. Now, the point of the problem is not that anyone could solve it. This should be a new problem. It should take a lot of time for you to solve it. Maybe you solve it very quickly. Maybe it's a very elementary problem, it turns out. But it's not a baby problem that an undergraduate could solve or that the supervisor could solve in an afternoon. The problem should be hard even for the supervisor. The point is, though, that they have an idea of what problem they think you could make progress on given the amount of progress that has been made in the field in general. Let's maybe give you an example of exactly what mathematical research could look like in a very simplified setting because oftentimes things that mathematicians look at are quite complicated. For example, my research is on partial second order estimates for long time solutions of the Kähler Ricci flow. Let's take an elementary example. Let's say you're looking at solutions of quadratic equations. You're looking at the quadratic formula. The question naturally arises well, suppose I now look at cubic equations, can I generate a formula for the solutions in terms of the coefficients? It turns out that yes, of course you can. There's a cubic formula. It's this much longer thing. So we now see a phenomenon. We see that in the linear case, it's trivial. Degree two, the quadratic case is well known. The degree three case, there's a cubic formula. And so what about degree four? Degree four also has a formula. It's so unwieldy that it's, it's almost useless. But okay, we now have it for one, two, three, four. What about five? Well, no such formula exists. The existence of such a formula turns out to be related to the solvability of certain Galois groups which you can associate to these polynomials. Such a formula exists if and only if this Galois group is solvable. For degree 5 and higher, this is not true. Well, how did we know that? How did we know all this Galois? Well, that was the research of Evariste Galois who made this progress in the field of Galois theory, the theory of field extensions. But, th but this is a simple problem. You, you get something that seems to behave nicely, like the quadratic formula. You extend it to the cubic. Okay, it behaves less nicely, but it's fine. You can still solve it completely. The same is true for the quartic, even though it's, it's unwieldy. But something goes wrong in degree five, and you, that would be a process of mathematical research. It was done a long time ago, but that theory still had required a mathematician to figure that out. So your supervisor has now given you this mathematical research problem that has not been solved. What do you do now? 
Well, typically the first stage of this is either familiarizing yourself with the, the background material that you do not already have. It's very likely that the problem is using some theory that you have not seen before. And this may not even be contained in textbooks. You may have to actually read other research articles on the subject in order to understand what the topic is. For example, maybe you want to look at the existence of certain types of metrics that are negatively curved everywhere or something of this nature. Then you would have to study all the relevant theory behind what is the meaning of negative curvature, negatively curved metrics and so on that may not be actually contained in any textbook. So you will do all this reading and there will be a lot of reading. So typically in my experience what I would do is spend really the first two hours of the day reading reading either background material or further reading research articles that are on the precipice of the current research. You need to understand what the problem is. You also have to understand exactly why has it not been solved already. If it's an interesting problem, people would be interested and therefore attempt to solve it. So why has it not been solved? You need to understand exactly why the old methods that we have tried fail and you try to use that. Maybe, maybe people have missed the technique. Maybe people haven't applied the technique to this problem. Maybe people just haven't realized some calculation trick that you can do that makes things go a little quicker. So you need to really know the old arguments well in order to move forward and generate new solutions to new problems. In the course of this, you're likely to fail. Mathematicians work very, very hard. They work very diligently to attempt to understand something. If something has been missed, then that's luck because mathematicians are often very good at knowing the old techniques and they can tell you everything about the problem because they will have spent much more time on it than you have. You've only been working on this for two, three days. What you want to do is very much understand these old approaches. Make sure you have a real feel for the, the idea, the problem itself. You know what is hard about the problem. Now see if you can come up with some creative ideas and see if you can extend old methods or perhaps bring in a new method altogether. What if you can't figure something out? That's a natural question that people ask. What if you're just stuck? The first thing I would say is that it takes a long time for you to realize that you're stuck. I've been working on my research problem for two years now. How do you deal with that? What do you do if you are confused? Well, oftentimes you just need to talk to more people. You need to talk to your advisor and if nothing productive is coming out of that, then see who else is around the department, who else is an area in some related field and maybe they have something to say. If there's no one in your department, then you can send someone an email. Mathematicians are usually very generous in the responses they give. Sometimes I've had extremely thorough email responses that have taught me more things about the subject than I would have found in a book. Oftentimes that will point you in a right direction and you'll learn more and then you can maybe find something in, in a related field and then pull that back. That's what's happened in my case. And you just continue to make these small improvements. Now, if it turns out that none of these things are actually yielding anything, that doesn't really matter because you're learning new mathematics. Every time you're forced to read an article, you will read something, you will learn new definitions, you will learn new theorems, and that will eventually be fruitful. It will appear somewhere later in your research. So you're never wasting time when you're working on your mathematics problem, even if it feels like you're, you're just beating your head against a wall and making practically no progress. The other thing that I will say on problem solving and mathematical research is that, of course, we want to get to the top of the mountain. We want to get to the complete solution of the problem. But often Oftentimes, as you're walking up the mountain, you'll see interesting things. You'll see some weird behavior going on in maybe this calculation, or maybe this has a weird symmetry that you're observing when trying to solve the problem. And you investigate that a little bit, or you spend some time investigating that. And that may prove to be something interesting in and of itself. So you could maybe, in the process of trying to bound something between two things, you realize that it oscillates in a strange way, and then maybe you want to investigate what's going on there. You compute the Taylor expansions or whatever and then you find out all this additional information about the subject or the object you're looking at and that can be a research article if it's interesting if other people will find it interesting and it's new then by all means you should publish it and so in that respect it's not always about getting to the top of the mountain but getting to know the landscape of the mountain indeed that's what's going on in my case as well I've been uh, working with another mathematician and the original question that I brought to him was one on bounding curvature and it turns out that there are some interesting things phenomenon arising if we actually look at these Taylor expansions of this thing and that's what we're currently investigating and 
to the last question I'd like to address here is do you brush up on old material? Do you revise undergraduate material or things that you have forgotten? At the start of the PhD, I did. I did a lot of work on point set topology, all these theorems that I had long forgotten about ticking off spaces and all that nonsense. And that was definitely fruitful. I have since forgotten many of these definitions that have not been necessary. I still do remember quite a few of them now. What I will say is that when you do research, you typically only learn just enough to deal with the problem that you're facing. So if I come across this algebra result and I need to understand something about Cremona groups or something of that nature, I will look up the definition, I will look up some basic properties so I can generate some examples and I have a rough feel for how they work. If I do not need to thoroughly understand them, I am not going to get a textbook out on Cremona groups and then spend my entire month learning about Cremona groups. I will learn just enough so I'm happy with what I'm trying to understand and then continue moving forward and over time if something is important you will study it more and more and you will learn it or relearn it more and more. For example I have not had to worry about Ito integrals since my course in stochastic analysis in undergraduate and I do not even remember how to define an Ito integral and that has not impacted me in the slightest. But if comes the day that I do have Ito integrals appearing in my research I know where to find the resources to learn it and I'll just review the definition and results and then go from there. The last thing on this topic of revision is that oftentimes when you relearn something or learn something that you have long forgotten after a few years, your mathematical ability has improved so much that those ideas that you thought were hard and needed to be reviewed quite often turn out to be so obvious that there's nothing to remember. All those log laws and trigonometric formulae and all this nonsense, you don't have to remember those because they seemed hard as a high school student but they're effort effortless if you have a, an undergraduate degree in mathematics. There's nothing complicated going on there at all. So memory is not really the biggest factor, it's actually understanding. Can you, can you understand what these ideas are? It's much more important to know when you understand something compared to remembering. It's much more important in my opinion to know exactly when you know something and to what extent you know it compared to just remembering a bunch of stuff. For example, if I, if I tell you that every continuous function attains a maximum on some closed interval. Right? If you can't tell me any examples that illustrate that or tell me why the real numbers are involved in that theorem at all or what continuity is, then remembering that theorem is just a waste of time and you're just parroting some information from the textbook. And mathematicians see through that immediately. They can tell exactly when you have just parroted something compared to when you actually thoroughly know it. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like this type of content. This is out of the ordinary for this channel. Typically we only discuss mathematical content itself, but I've had so many people contact me about mathematical research that I thought I should definitely record a video just giving some idea, at least in my experience, of what it's like doing mathematical research. And so